Now, what I can say is uh, countries like Canada and the United States and others are continuing uh, to uh, encourage uh, everything that be, can be done to protect human life, including uh, including with humanitarian pauses. Uh, this is something that I did speak about with uh, President Biden. Uh, we share our concerns. Uh, we also uh, will continue to stand steadfast uh, in terms of, of uh, ensuring that Hamas is held to account, but also ensuring that everything is done to protect civilian life, including uh, Palestinians in Gaza and uh, in the West Bank. What are your thoughts on, uh, on some people calling for a ceasefire? What are your thoughts on the possibility of ceasefire? It's hard to watch the news every night and see uh, the impacts on civilians, including children, uh, and not want it to stop. Uh, we understand how difficult the situation is, the impact of the horrific terrorist attack by Hamas. Uh, Hamas, an organization that is not only uh, responsible for the deaths of Israelis, but also, and over years and decades, responsible for the deaths of Palestinians as well. Um, we need to see a cease, uh, we need to see a, a humanitarian pause so we can flow, uh, we need to see ceasing of, of, of the levels of violence that we're seeing. Um, we need to see civilians protected, we need to see a humanitarian pause uh, to get aid in, to get Canadians out, agreements to get to ensure uh, vulnerable people out, of contributors to get hostages released. These are the things that the people example, around the world Quebec are looking for. has negotiated its own social security agreements with 39 countries, on peut pas voir and Canada les à has negotiated with 16. This would be a complex and multi-year process, and it would be taking place at a time of real uncertainty, geopolitical uncertainty, I truly believe as Deputy Prime Minister nous nous and as Finance Minister la vie civile Canada, soit protégée. C'est pour ça that que nous appelons right now, pour des corridors humanitaires, pour une pause humanitaire, pour de l'aide uh, pour uh, uh, les, les, les civils palestiniens. Nous demandons que les otages soient remis en liberté. Nous demandons qu'on fasse tout ce qui est nécessaire pour sortir les Canadiens euh, et leurs familles de Gaza. Next question. Uh, from CBC News. Uh, hi, Prime Minister. Uh, my colleagues are reporting that uh, Canadians in Gaza uh, might be able to leave on Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Can I ask you what specific services the Canadian government intends to offer? What is the Canadian government going to be doing for people who manage to make it across the border? Uh, we are uh, working with all of our uh, regional officials and our allies to make sure that as will Canadians he, come out province, to safety, hopefully in the coming days, uh, they are properly will supported. Uh, we've been there from the very beginning jail. for people uh, leaving the West Bank, for people uh, leaving Israel since, uh, since uh, October 7. Uh, we will continue to be to there to help Canadians the and their families. Canada the is the country Consular officials of peace, on the ground. We will be there as we are. I think that's something all Canadians believe in. That's something. Prime Minister Brian Platt with Bloomberg. Next question. Um, question uh, please, earlier this week in Ottawa, the U.S. ambassador said your country's in for a big fight if you move forward with the digital tax that would hit a bunch of big American tech companies. Did you did you discuss that with President Biden this morning? And are you willing to risk American trade retaliation by moving forward with this? The uh, uh, finance minister addressed that issue no. earlier this week uh, in her Straight press conference. No, but I can tell you, no uh, this that. morning we talked okay. about a lot of my different follow -up issues. My follow-up question: I want to follow up on what my. That's Did just India come up in your conversations with Biden? And I, do, now, is there any update that you have? Have you been briefed at all from law enforcement officials I'm on gonna, the investigation? I'm, I'm hoping Are you that concerned I can ask that this may end with no criminal charges? Uh, just any update that you have? Uh, at all? Canada is a country of the rule of law, it's, and we it's will okay. always it's, speak. Yeah. It's, um, it's we were it's okay. it's uh, okay. it's responsible and serious in My how follow-up question uh, is, we, we are hearing, as you know, shared, that the Saskatchewan government And we continue to ask the Indian government to work with us. We're hearing that the New Brunswick government is also looking at legal options. I want to follow up on my colleague's question here. What would the Liberal government do? Would there be fines? Would there be legal action if that happens? We also deplore the violation of the Geneva Convention that the 
um, Indian it government chose to do when they arbitrarily and I think suspended the diplomatic immunity of uh, over 40 Canadian diplomats uh, in law. India. That's for our a country to simply decide and it, that as of a few days from now, sure that your diplomats will no longer have diplomatic immunity. Um, is against all the principles of global diplomatic conventions. And for us, it's an example that um, that we need to continue to impress upon the Indian government the importance of the rule of law. It seems like you did not engage them on it. Would it really have been impossible to at least You said earlier this week that while you believe that Israel has a right to defend itself, the price of justice cannot be the continued suffering of all Palestinian civilians. I'm wondering if you think that constitutes collective punishment. Today's meeting how we should interpret I'm going to allow. Uh, you know, in response, the, obviously, to the discussions that I will continue in academic circles, and diplomatic circles, and legal Ontario, circles around uh, around this issue. For um, me, uh, it's a matter of common and sense. I agreed uh, seeing that the, the uh, CPP suffering and the pensions of so of many people Canadians is not, are to my mind, leading towards uh, opportunities for a two-state solution. It's not leading towards greater Canada. prospects for and peace I would add, in the medium and long term in the region, uh, and that's what we all need to be focused on. Yes, it's especially there need to be consequences for, for Hamas for its horrific their and unacceptable across the terrorist attack of October 7th. Their pension security but seriously. we need I to do so in a way that, that minimizes the, the impact on civilians. And that's why we've been causing, calling for call humanitarian meeting. aid to flow into Gaza. We've been calling for I humanitarian pauses meeting. to allow people Ministers to get that support in and to get Canadians out. Yes, we need to release the hostages. They need to release the hostages. We need to see civilian life protected. And, and you, very you know, on the digital services tax issue. What when exactly I think is about the problem Canadians, with, when I think uh, about my own constituents, sorry, bad word. I don't for think an hour is to wait too for the OECD time framework to kick in. Why, why this pick this fight now if, in fact, the ambassador's prediction comes true? What, what's the issue? The uh, yes, the, the, the uh, Deputy Prime Minister and Finance Minister spoke to this earlier this week. This um, we're a government that believes issue. that everyone should pay their fair share of taxes. We are hopeful that there will be a common framework eventually sometime in the future. We've been very, very clear about our responsibility to Canadians, and uh, particularly for services delivered to Canadians on Canadian soil. Thank you. That will be happening next month, and I look forward to working with ministers on the agenda. Nevertheless, Ontario Premier Doug Ford did suggest that the And I look forward to working with ministers on the agenda.